Hi there mate, how's it going? It's Benja here and this is a breakdown and review of Snowpiercer Season 2 Episode 9 titled The Show Must Go On and Episode 10 titled Into the White. Wilford has taken full control of Snowpiercer following his successful coup d'etat in episode 8. He has apparently sent Leighton to work in the compost car. That is his punishment and it's quite brilliant to be honest. It sends a clear message. If you stir some figurative shit, you get to stir literal shit. Wilford knows how to run his train, doesn't he? Not all of Wilford's actions are as amusing as that one though, because he gets his men to collect everybody's medical records and wants them divided by age. Children, adolescents, 18 to 39, and the rest, elderly. Ruth is taken aback by this because she knows he must be planning something sinister. Alex confirms Ruth's suspicions later in the episode as she reveals what Wilford did on Big Alice. He got rid of half of its population because they were draining its resources. That's what tyrants do and he'll keep doing it in the name of the greater good. He'll say he has to because otherwise they're gonna run out of resources. Ruth is already disillusioned but this new information plus the the fact that Wilford doesn't want to go back for Melanie are the proverbial final nails in the coffin. Ruth no longer wants to carry out Wilford's orders because she sees through his bullcrap. Talking of crap, she gets sent to the compost car and joins Leighton. Earlier in the episode, we pay a visit to car 272 which had been closed for years, but Wilford gets it operational again. It's called Willy's World and Wilford cosplays as Willy Wonka. This is unbelievably surprising because I remember reading some fan theories a few years ago which suggested that Snowpiercer was a sequel to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. At first I laughed out loud at this theory, but as I read through it, it kinda made sense for some reason. I'm sure the writers of the show know about that theory as well and that's why they put this little reference in this episode. And I liked it, it was one of the highlights of the season. The dinner scene was my favorite sequence from episodes 9 and 10. This scene took up around 15 minutes and I really enjoyed how Wilfred went around the table to test every single person. Osweiler playing the piano when he's asked why he is needed was quite weird. I have no idea what was going on there. I mean, mate, Wilford was talking about your genitorial qualifications and you get up and play the piano to prove what. I was definitely puzzled by this. Osweiler notwithstanding, this sequence was awesome, like I said. Wilford brings up LJ's criminal history and makes her contradict herself, he traps her. Alex loses it because she knows what Wilford is doing, so she gets thrown into the brig. Ruth has to make a choice between saving Melanie and supporting Wilford, and as we've discussed, she makes the wrong choice. Wilford asks Bess Till to be his advisor because she is able to think for herself. She says they shouldn't accept execute the people that killed all the breachmen, but Wilford pulls the lever and kills all of them. Just when it looks like all hope is lost, Avi, who was sent to Big Alice to deputize for Alex, makes contact with Melanie. Avi hears her voice on the radio but mutes the sound before anyone else can. So he knows now that Melanie is alive and he sends a message to the compost car. Ruth and Leighton receive the message and get ready to break out as episode 9 comes to a close. They lure in the guard and kill him quite violently. Ruth delivers the final blow with a shovel and goes, quote, Shovel, it's good in the trenches. End quote. Ruth is probably the MVP of this season and she was awesome in the season finale as well, starting with this shovel scene. The compost duo finds Alex in the brig and she tells them about the secret entrance to Wilford's bedroom on Big Alice. She learns about the fact that her mother is alive and she decides to make it seem like she got her act together and that she is 100% with Wilford now. She wants to keep an eye on him while Javi, Ben, Leighton and Ruth switch tracks in order to go up the Rocky Mountains and pick up Melanie. The compost duo make their way to Big Alice's engine room. Leighton picks up a sword and Ruth looks jealous. She wants to have one too. And afterwards, using those swords, they get rid of the guards and make a plan to inform Ben that they're gonna switch tracks. 
After they do that, Ruth and Leighton sneak into Snowpiercer in a Willy's World box. I think the person that sneaks them into Snowpiercer is the last Aussie from Big Alice. We've seen her in three or four episodes. She got close to the last Aussie on Snowpiercer and she started helping them. She passed messages to Josie for example. So that's how Ruth and Leighton get through the border. Breach Mboskovic is there to welcome them and as ever he's got the best lines. He goes, Okie dokie, let's go make coup. I found this part hilarious and I lost it when he said it. Ben and Javi are able to switch tracks but Wilford realizes with LJ's help that something is wrong. They both know Alex's apology sounds insincere and Wilford realizes what's going on. He goes back to Big Alice and has his man beat up Javi. Wilford then speeds up the train and that's how Snowpiercer misses Melanie. We saw this from Melanie's point of view in episode 6 and now we know what has happened on Snowpiercer. Alex isn't done fighting though, she's got one more trick up her sleeve. While she was being transported from Snowpiercer to Big Alice, she picked up a razor and put it in her mouth. This is a callback to episode 4 when Wilford visited the night car for the first time and he gave Alex a razor because he wanted her to assassinate Leighton. That's why she's able to hide a razor in her mouth. She's experienced. She didn't have to use the razor back in episode 4 because Wilford called off the attack after learning about the possibility that Earth was warming up. Getting back to the season finale, Alex uses the razor to attack Wilford and she escapes while the guards take Wilford to the Headwoods. Wilford orders Josie to go outside and breach Snowpiercer's engine room. We learn in these final two episodes that Josie is much more resistant to cold than Icy Bob and Wilford doesn't wait around to use Josie. So she's sent outside to kill Ben and take control of the engine room. Alex reunites with Boscovich and Leighton. She tells them there might still be a way to go back to Melanie because Alex apparently knows that the aquarium car can be manually decoupled and she hid this information from Wilford earlier in the season when he wanted to decouple the trains. This makes it clear that Alex has been on Melanie's side ever since the beginning even if she didn't want to admit it. Leighton and company have Audrey as well and they use her against Wilford, but Wilford doesn't think Leighton can just execute her. Before we can find out whether or not Leighton would do that, Josie breaches the aquarium car after Ben gets in touch with her from the engine and tells her what to do. So she wrecks the aquarium car and the Snowpiercer engine plus 10 or so other ones go on their separate ways to recover Melanie. Leighton and Alex reach the research station and find Melanie's climate model but she's not there. Her journal says she's walked into the white, meaning the snow, after running out of food but crucially we don't see a body. And lastly, Snowpiercers start their journey back to Big Alice and all the other cars with the information that there are some hot spots on Earth. So Melanie's mission was a success. I'm not gonna beat around the bush, I don't like the fact that Melanie got so little screen time this season and to seemingly write her off without even showing her in the season finale was extremely disappointing. She almost single-handedly carried the first season and her absence in season 2 was noticeable because Wilfred had to do a lot to keep this show interesting. If Melanie was more involved and if Leighton was a tiny bit wiser in terms of politics, this season would have been memorable, but as it is, I am disappointed. Even though we haven't seen a body, I think Melanie might really be dead and I just hate that. I hate that the strongest character on the show has been this absent and she didn't even show up in the season finale. I understand that this might be setting up some intriguing storyline. Melanie could have been saved by another train or maybe she found a bunker or another geothermal vent like the one in the research station. So I get that there are still quite a few possibilities but my gut feeling says she's gone. And that leaves a sour taste. 
That said, this one and a half hour season finale extravaganza was exciting. It made me like Ruth even more. Leighton seemed competent for once. I appreciated that. Wilfred's demeanor during the dinner scene was chilling. That was one of my favorite moments of the season. I enjoyed how Josie was set up for this big moment and she delivered. Side characters like Boscovich, LJ, Ben and Javi played crucial roles and I enjoyed their presence. So it wasn't all bad. Let's reveal my rating now. You can see my scale on the left hand side. I will give Snowpiercer Season 2 a 5 out of 10. As the scale says, I think this season was average. My rating could have been higher if Melanie played a bigger role and if Wilford didn't have to carry this show so much. Well, what did you think about the season finale and season 2 in general? What would be your rating? Let me know in the comments section down below. Like this video if you've enjoyed it and subscribe for more movie reviews and TV show breakdowns. That's it for now. Take care and see you in the next video.